Hi there. I want to tell you something about Hong Kong. No, I'm not from Hong Kong. But people like me who were born on China mainland are all familiar with the Chinese Communist Party line. China is the mother of Hong Kong. But the reality is otherwise. You see, mainland China was and emotionally still is the infant in this relationship. I was born in the late 1970s and lived through a key turning point in history for the CCP. It was at this time that the party decided to come out of the closet of Maoist isolationism and implement reforms known in the West as the opening of China. These reforms were for the most part economic, but many within China and outside felt they would provide the impetus for political reforms. Now, this expectation that economic development will make the CCP more receptive to the political aspirations of a rising middle class persisted until recently. People in the West, and perhaps in China too, forget the devastation of Mao's Cultural Revolution, which spent a decade to 1976. The great Belgian-born Australian China watcher P.L. Rickmans wrote that the period represented the climax of 20 years of systematic training in aggression, of legitimizing violence and hatred, the daily witnessing of looting, revenge, cruelties, humiliations inflicted by children on their elders under the pretext of class struggle, the obligation to be present at, if not take an active part in, the public denunciation of neighbors, friends, fellow workers, and parents. All this must have put its mark on the society as a whole. There is no doubt in my mind that it did. By the end of the Cultural Revolution, Chinese people's knowledge of and respect for Chinese traditional culture were at an all-time low. Businessmen and intellectuals were widely accepted as villains. It was considered justifiable and even righteous to publicly humiliate, discriminate, torture, and even in some cases, kill entrepreneurs and their descendants. This was a sick and traumatized society. You know, when China was starving, screaming, and desperately in need of nurturing, it was Mother Hong Kong who stepped in. Despite enormous uncertainties and risks, economic aid and investment poured from Hong Kong into the mainland. Now, you gotta remember that only a decade earlier than that, private ownership and investment were eliminated through forced nationalization, which is in fact state-orchestrated robbery. Out of a sense of ethnic affinity, free market Hong Kong took it upon itself to donate generously to every major natural disaster in China. Now, Hong Kong was literally China's lifeline to normality. Now, I'm old enough to remember that in China of the 1980s and 90s, when most families couldn't afford a TV set, those small video theaters provided a communal alternative. Now, people watched Hong Kong movies from VCR players day and night. Some were so addicted that they can, even now, recall every single line of a movie. Now, these theaters remained popular even many years after television became a household standard item in mainland China. To young Chinese people of Generation X and Y, the Hong Kong movies and TV shows opened eyes, stirred hearts, and established a connection with fundamental human values. The popular culture of Hong Kong was helping to heal the delinquent culture of the mainland. Hong Kong songs, in place of revolutionary songs inciting class and nationalist and even racist hatred, echoed everywhere on TV, on the street, and in karaoke bars. Now, although Cantonese is very different from Mandarin and most Chinese dialects, but almost every mainlander can sing one or two songs from Hong Kong, even my mom. My generation learned from Hong Kong popular culture that to love and to show love is a source of pride, not a shame or disgrace. Humanity is not, as portrayed in the communist belief system, black and white, but complicated and diverse. 
the world cannot be reduced to a binary moral divide between good progressives and bad reactionaries. Now, the latter are not sinister and is ethnically respectable to become one. Your family, not your party, is the core of your identity. Since crime and gangster dramas was the most popular TV genre at the time, everyone, including children, memorized their invocation of the Miranda rights. It was through legal dramas made in Hong Kong that Chinese citizens of that generation became acquainted with the institution of the jury and the common law system. Hong Kong's Independent Commission uh, Against Corruption, ICAC, became an anti-corruption emblem to all Chinese, resenting the people's government's corrupt bureaucracy. Some of these Hong Kong dramas openly mocked the British colonial government, which raised lots of questions in totalitarian China. Why, people asked, did the British government allow this to happen? Don't all governments suppress dissents? Under the cloak of shared ethnicity, Hong Kong began to teach China how to stand on its feet in the contemporary world. It restored a moral life to people on mainland China who had lived through the moral vacuum of the Cultural Revolution. But Hong Kong has learned, and the world has learned through its suffering, that this child it fostered is prepared to betray these values. Hong Kong played a mother to a devastated China, but to Beijing, there can be only one mother. The party. The party sees itself as the mother of all Chinese in the world. But what sort of mother would inflict on its children the kind of torture described by Rick Mans, dramatized at the Tiananmen Square, and again now in the streets of Hong Kong? In the last couple of days, Beijing has been carrying out a political purge in Hong Kong, detaining people simply because of what they say or said. Yesterday, Mr. Jimmy Lai, a pro-democracy Hong Kong media tycoon, was arrested for so-called breaking the national security law. Before apprehended, he said this, I came to Hong Kong with nothing. It's the freedom of this city that gave me everything. Now, it's time to return the favor with my life. As someone who was born in China, civilized by Hong Kong and naturalized as an Australian citizen, I too have a keen sense of liberty and other important values shared by Hong Kong, Australia and the rest of the free world, where millions of Chinese migrants thrive. I just want Hong Kong to know that, even though I can't speak for other mainlanders, at least I myself am still grateful here. And I choose to stand with you, with freedom, to whatever end.